Okay, here's a woolly beast that you don't see very often. And of course this is a reproduction, not an original one. But this is a Lamat revolver. And these were, uh, the originals were used in uh, limited quantities in the Civil War. It's a percussion revolver. Uh, they say that General Jeb Stewart carried one of these. Now this one is a, a reproduction made by Pietta and imported by Navy Arms. Now normally the Pietta guns that you see you think of being kind of uh, cheap and not finished real well but this one here is proof that uh, Pietta can make some very finely finished and fitted uh, guns when they set their mind to it. And of course these are nowhere near as uh, inexpensive as most uh, Pietta guns are either but uh, and Something that makes this uh, big old heavy percussion revolver kind of unusual is that it is a 44 caliber and it is a 9 shot 44 caliber. And instead of having a center pin through the cylinder, that center pin is actually a 20 gauge shotgun barrel. And you can see the way that they've. Uh, of course it's not loaded but you can see the way that they've done that here you've got your nipples around here for your regular 44 caliber uh, uh, chambers and here is uh, a nipple here for that center barrel and normally your firing pin hits on the nipple up here but if you rotate this down then it's set up to hit that center barrel, the cap on the center barrel. And of course, on a percussion revolver, you don't want to you don't want to fire it without a cap on the, on the nipple. It'll damage your nipple if, nipples if you're not careful. But these are a very big, robust revolver. Now something that is kind of weak on them is the loading lever. And this is kind of hard to do reaching around a camera. But uh, you put it on half cock, of course, when you're loading it. Pour your powder in. And right there is your loading lever to force the ball in. And this loading lever, compared to most uh, percussion revolvers, is kind of on the weak side. And I understand that on the original guns that it was pretty common for those to uh, break. I have not shot this gun very much, just occasionally. And I've never fired the shotgun barrel on it. I was afraid to what that would, this is such a nicely finished gun, I was afraid to what it was going to do to the finish on the underside of the, t of the main barrel. But it's still a fun gun to shoot uh, just in uh, your single action. On, uh, of course it is single action, but I, what I meant was uh, on the main uh, 44 caliber barrels. And the end of the ramrod, or the end of the loading rod here, is actually a ramrod for loading your shotgun barrel. It's hard to do this stuff reaching around a camera and looking through a viewfinder. That to kind of bear with me a little bit. And it also serves in this notch here to retain the loading lever. like so. Now some of these were made with a pull pin here for the takedown. Now this one's a little different than most of them. This one's got a lever. Move that lever down or the ones that have a pin you pull the pin and then you can unscrew this assembly off of there to take it apart. 
Now I'm not gonna it is kind of a pain sometimes to take it apart so I'm not gonna try that right now since it's not dirty and doesn't need cleaned but anyway if you are interested in seeing one of these taken apart and shot I believe there's a guy named Duelist uh, 1954 I believe is his name that has some uh, good videos up of uh, shooting and taking one of these down if you want to go have a look at that see if I can get some of these markings to show up here very nicely finished gun I haven't shot this a whole lot I've just uh, I've played around with it a few times but uh, haven't shot it very often black powder only of course now this is one of the very early ones look at the serial number there 144 but these are a very interesting gun and I believe the the originals were made in uh, France and during the Civil War a certain number of them uh, found their way into the Confederacy not very many I don't think I don't think very many of these were made in total let alone the ones that uh, made it to the United States or to the Confederate States and this is not an exact reproduction of the originals the originals as I understand it were 42 caliber instead of 44 caliber and they had a 16 gauge barrel instead of a 20 gauge barrel center barrel but I guess when they were doing the reproduction they figured that it would be a lot simpler for people if it was chambered for uh, calibers that uh, were readily you know readily available for components you know uh, balls and wads for the shotgun barrel and all that be a lot more user-friendly uh, to people nowadays in uh, 44 caliber and 20 gauge instead of uh, 42 caliber and 16 gauge but anyway I thought I'd get this thing out here and let you have a quick look at it and I want to do an end of video shout out for a guy that calls himself uh, HTM Fixer and he's got a pretty good channel got some good videos up you got time you might want to go and have a look at it I'll put a link to his channel in the description of this video well thanks for watching I'll add one thing on the end of this video uh, normally I don't uh, show uh, gun boxes uh, I didn't figure people would be that interested in the boxes that uh, guns come in and, and a lot of the guns I own I don't have the box for but uh, this one here is kind of a very nice box I thought maybe I'd just tack this on the end here and let you have a look at it uh, the box that the Lamapt uh, reproduction came in thanks for watching